In this video, I'm going to talk about PRK surgery. PRK is an acronym for photorefractive keratectomy, essentially LASIK without a flap. PRK involves gently brushing away the surface cells or epithelium on the surface of the cornea, which is the clear window in the front of the eye, and then using a cool ultraviolet eczema laser to reshape the cornea, much like sculpting a pair of contact lenses onto the front surface of the eye. PRK should not be confused with the old RK surgery, where cuts are actually physically made in the cornea. PRK uses the newest eczema laser technology with identical outcomes to LASIK. There are multiple reasons that we recommend PRK over LASIK. The most common is patients who have irregularly shaped corneas. Safety always comes first. In patients who have corneas that are not regularly shaped, particularly more steepening in the lower part of the cornea than the upper part of the cornea, PRK is safer than LASIK because of a problem called ectasia. Ectasia is a progressive steepening and thinning of the cornea that can occur after LASIK. This risk is minimized by having PRK. The risk of ectasia also is increased in patients with thinner corneas, and so for patients with thinner corneas, we typically push them more to PRK than LASIK. Another reason that we preferentially do PRK over LASIK is for patients that have significant dry eye. PRK is much less likely to cause dry eye than LASIK. The last reason that I'll recommend PRK over LASIK is for patients that do sports that involve a lot of direct blows to the eye, for instance, boxers or ultimate fighting champions. When I did surgery on Boss Rutten, who was the 2001 UFC champion, he was an excellent candidate for LASIK except for the fact that he did mixed martial arts and received a lot of blows to the eye. For this reason, I recommended PRK over LASIK in his case. PRK surgery is elective and is performed to decrease or eliminate dependence on glasses and contact lenses. While I can't make a guarantee of perfect 20-20 vision after PRK surgery, I will get you as close to that as I can. The vast majority of patients who have PRK surgery get 20-20 vision without glasses. PRK works best to treat low and moderate degrees of nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. PRK has identical outcomes to LASIK with an extremely high satisfaction rate. The main downside of PRK compared to LASIK is the vision remains blurred and there's potential for some discomfort after the treatment. With PRK, it takes a week for the surface cells to grow back over the surface of the cornea and anywhere from two to six weeks for those cells to smooth to allow for clear vision. It can take up to three months for maximal vision after PRK. With PRK, you have the option of having both eyes treated on the same day, but in this circumstance, you'll typically be out of work and not driving for a week. We can also do one eye at a time so that you can get back to work the next day using good vision from the other eye. In this case, where one eye is done at a time, the second eye is done two to four weeks later depending on how quickly you recover vision in the first eye. With PRK, you'll be in the treatment room for about 10 minutes. The treatment itself takes two to three minutes per eye. PRK is done under eye drop anesthesia. There are no needles. We typically give you a relaxing medication like Xanax by mouth in order to relax you during the treatment. During PRK, you'll experience a mild pressure sensation, but no pain. With PRK, an instrument is used to brush away the surface cells after the anesthetic eye drops have been placed. Following this, a cool eczema laser is used to sculpt tissue from the cornea in order to correct your vision. Following the use of the laser, a sponge with a medication called mitomycin C, which is an anti-cancer agent, is placed on the cornea for a few seconds to help with healing. Lastly, a bandage contact lens is placed onto the eye to assist with healing and minimize discomfort. This bandage contact is removed at our office five to seven days after surgery. If the contact falls out, call the office rather than try and replace it yourself. The only time I've ever seen a problem with PRK surgery is when someone tried to replace the contact lens that had fallen out by themselves. After PRK, your vision is going to be quite blurred for the first week or two. While you will not be black blind, images will appear really fuzzy. In many circumstances, the vision in the first one to three days is acceptable. The vision then drops as the surface cells heal over the center of vision. It may take another week or so for the vision to start to clear. The amount of discomfort after surgery varies from patient to patient. Most PRK patients experience mild burning, stinging, and tearing. Some patients have no symptoms and felt like nothing was done. In very rare circumstances, patients can have severe pain. To minimize pain after PRK surgery, we place a bandage contact lens. You'll also be taking a topical Advil-like drop, and we'll give you what we call comfort drops, which are drops with a mild anesthetic. All that's typically needed for discomfort is Tylenol or Advil, in rare circumstances where patients have a lot of pain, a stronger medication like Vicodin may be required. Follow-up is done the day after PRK, then usually four to six days later with us or your optometrist to monitor healing and remove the contact lens. In terms of drops after PRK, you'll be on a topical non-steroidal or aspirin drop for three days after treatment, an antibiotic, 
for one week after treatment and a steroid drop twice a day for three months after PRK surgery. Like LASIK, the risks with PRK are low and typically treatable. In fact, you take twice the risk of losing your vision or losing your eye with a contact lens than you do with PRK. In terms of risks, infection does occur approximately 1 in 10,000 cases. In my career, I've seen two cases of infection in PRK when directions were not followed. In both of these cases, the infection occurred after the contact lens fell out and the patient tried to replace it themselves. The next risk that we need to talk about with PRK that's unique to PRK is something called corneal haze or clouding. Fortunately, the chance of haze happening is extremely low, well less than 1%, and has virtually been eliminated by the use of mitomycin C. Delayed healing after PRK or very high prescriptions increase this risk of haze. The last risk of PRK is the need for potential enhancement surgery that occurs in 5-10% to of patients. Side effects with PRK typically improve or disappear with time, but may be permanent. The three side effects you might see are dry eye, glare and halo, or loss of contrast. Dry eye manifests as burning, stinging, or blur at the end of the day. Dry eye is much more common in women, particularly those over 40, and patients with a history of autoimmune or thyroid disease. While dry eye can occur with PRK, the risk of dry eye is much less than with LASIK. We sometimes push patients into PRK instead of having LASIK because PRK is less likely to cause dry eye because the corneal nerves are not cut across as they can be with LASIK. Another side effect of PRK is the potential for glare and halo, particularly in low light conditions and at night. You may experience this as a glow around lights or glare from oncoming traffic. Most importantly, if you currently have glare and halo with your glasses and contact lenses, you're more likely to have glare and halo after PRK. High prescriptions and large pupils are also risk factors for glare and halo. The last potential side effect of PRK is loss of contrast. This can be experienced as haziness in low light or fluorescent lighting. This is most commonly seen in high prescriptions and for most patients something that's not really noticed. PRK for patients that are nearsighted or myopic is more accurate and stable than patients who have PRK for farsightedness or hyperopia. Farsighted patients are more likely to have the side effects of loss of contrast and glare and halo, as well as are more likely to need early or late enhancement with a farsighted treatment. Astigmatism is a visual condition where the cornea is more curved in one direction and flatter in the other direction, which blurs vision at both distance and near. Patients with higher astigmatism of two or more diopters have an increased risk of side effects. A diopter is a measure of the power of the lens used to treat astigmatism. High astigmatism increases the risk of glare, halo, and enhancement after PRK. It also increases the risk of haze and the loss of something called best corrected vision. After PRK surgery, most patients are able to see 20-20 without glasses. For patients with loss of best corrected vision, this means even with the best pair of glasses, we can't quite get you back to perfect 20-20. Fortunately, most patients that do lose a little bit of best corrected vision don't really notice it. Once you've had PRK surgery, many people feel like they don't need regular eye exams. The fact of the matter is, you need to continue to have regular eye exams to check for glaucoma, cataracts, and retinal detachment. Patients who are highly nearsighted are still at higher risk for glaucoma and retinal detachment, even after PRK surgery. In summary, PRK is an excellent option for patients who are not good candidates for LASIK. It's safe and effective for treating nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism.